children i hope you all have gone through the biology lesson 2 cell the unit of life that unit 2 structure of cell in continuation with that structure of cell now we are going to learn the other structures of the cell number 1 nucleus today we are going to learn about nucleus nucleolus vacuoles etc nucleus nucleus is the most important part of the cell if nucleus is removed the cell dies children so you can understand the importance of the nucleus nucleus is the largest cell organelle nucleus is a small spherical mass located almost in the center of cytoplasm it has a delicate nuclear membrane which is filled with a dense nucleoplasm the substance present inside the cell is called cytoplasm the substance present inside the nucleus is called nucleoplasm the substance present inside the vacuole is called cell sac these are the three important questions children in the nucleoplasm there are thread like structures called chromatin fibers during cell division the chromatin fibers turn into chromosomes that means an ordinary cell when it is not undergoing any cell division if you observe you will find nucleoplasm containing chromatin fiber fibers in the form of reticulum reticulum means network that is why it is also called as chromatin reticulum but during cell division these chromatin fibers turn into chromosomes the number of chromosomes is def def definite in each species chromosomes chromosomes means zooms mean structures that is why lysosomes ribosomes like that you came you come across in the previous unit zooms mean structures and chromo means colored so colored structures these appear colored under the microscope in the nucleus these chromosomes number is definite for each species for example if you take asterisk a round one it is 2 garden pea it is 14 onion it is 16 suppose you take lion it is 38 like that chromosomes of man is 46 so every time the chromosome appears in pairs 2 is equal to 1 suppose if i say 46 chromosomes in man means 23 pairs the number is definite for each species the chromosomes carry the genetic characters from the parents to offspring through the union of the egg of female and the sperm of male means suppose the structures like face cut color hair structure eyeball structure all this are inheritance that is from your grandparents you will get when you go to a doctor saying that you have got some wheezing problem the question doctor ask you is is there anybody having at home grandparents or somebody like that that means you get it through your parents not only diseases several characters we inherit from our parents these are passed from one generation to other generation through these chromosomes chromosomes contain a genetic material children chromosomes are made up of chromatin which is composed of hereditary units called genes so the units of hereditary are genes not our american genes that is genes g e n e s genes are made of dna deoxyribonucleic acid a complex chemical substance it is the genes which matter and the not the number of chromosomes determine the characteristics of species for example lion 
tiger and house cat all have 38 chromosomes for that species that is if you take any lion lion will have 38 chromosomes any tiger 38 so definite for that species but it doesn't mean that they determine the characters the characteristics are mainly determined by genes only what it now each nucleus has one or more round shape nucleoli inside the nucleus nucleus singular nuclei plural nucleolus singular nucleoli plural the nucleolus participate in protein synthesis by forming and storing rna by learning rna you have learnt rna helps in synthesis of protein that is protein synthesis got it so the function of nucleus we are going to learn it controls all the activities of the cells involved in cell division it is also involved in cell division it, it controls all the activities that is why nucleus is called as control center of the cell chromatin fibers or dna present in the nucleus help in transmission of hereditary characters from the parents to the offspring they produce ribosomes and also dictates ribosomes to synthesize proteins next structures we are learning is vacuoles these are certain clear spaces in the cytoplasm with water and other substances in solution plant cells have larger vacuoles with fluid cell fluid called cell sac while animal cells have fewer vacuoles and smaller ones vacuoles are covered by covering called tonoplast here also you have got three questions children the outermost covering of animal cell cell membrane the outermost covering of nucleus nuclear membrane the outermost covering of vacuole means tonoplast and the outermost covering of the plant cell means cell wall so you have to be very careful read the lesson completely and then write the answer properly they help in storage of water and other substances such as food pigments when it comes to the pigments you have learned in plastids there are certain other pigments which are not related to the plastids called as anthocyanins no those are all present in this vacuoles okay vacuoles contain pigments and water product products they give turgidity to the cell got it turgidity when the you take shampoo shache or anything when it is filled with the liquid it will have some texture and when you take away water it become flaccid plain water or whatever liquid present in that shache that condition of the bulged in nature is called turgidity the cell gets turgidity to through this vacuoles there are certain other granules also present children vacuoles and granules are non living structures these are many cell many small particles in the cytoplasm in the form of crystals and droplets if you take onions onions will have such a specific smell no children calcium oxalate crystals these are all present in vacuoles only tomatoes oxalate crystals and lemon these are all uh, structures present in these are inorganic structures present in the form of granules these contain starch in plant cells glycogen in animal cells and some of sometimes fat containing granules are also present in the cell now we are moving to the next topic called differences between plant cell and animal cell plant cell and animal cells are similar there are many similarities children when you take the similarities the basic structures are similar in plant and animals both contain the cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies mitochondria ribosomes however 
there are so many important differences also between the two. These differences we are going to learn one by one. First we are going to learn what is a feature which is different. Then we are going to learn the plant cell how it is and in animal cell how it is. First let us take cell wall. Cell wall is a definite cell wall and it is made up of complex carbohydrate namely cellulose that is present in the plant cell and it also gives shape, structure and to certain extent it also regulates the um, in a, it, it, it is completely permeable children. It allows all the substances to enter into the plant cell. Whereas cell, cell wall is absent in animal cell. Totally it is absent. Centrosomes. That is why whenever we draw no children before going for centrosomes, we will learn about cell wall. When we draw the diagram, in plant cell we will draw two lines. Whereas in animal cell, we will draw only one line outside. The outer boundary, if you write two lines and you will write the title as animal cell, they give zero marks. So remember very carefully well, while drawing the animal cell, draw only one boundary line. Centrosome. Centrosomes are absent in plant cell they are not present and in animal cells they are present they take vital role in formation of spindle fibers spindle fibers during the di division of the cell they initiate reg cell regulate and regulate cell division got it with the help of the asters around them no they to form the two poles spindle fibers and all in the animal cell they play a vital role whereas they are absent in the plant cell vacuoles are very prominent and one are more and very big and are concerned with, with excretion or secretion of the plant cell whereas vacuoles are very small sometimes they are not present if at all they are present also they are very small Sometimes they are temporary, they form and then they again dissolve. So vacuoles will not have that big role in animal cell. Coming to plastids. Plastids are present in plant cells. There are no plastids in animal cell. In detailed structure about plastids, functions and all, we have learned types. We have learned in previous unit. Now coming to size of the cell. Plant cell is usually large with a distinct outlines two outlines cell wall cell membrane whereas animal cells are not as big as plant cell usually they are small with less distinct boundary namely cell membrane cytoplasm cytoplasm is not as dense as in the animal cell it is lighter because most of the space is occupied by the vacuole now and the cell sap is also present prominently in plant cell so cytoplasm is not as dense as animal cell in plant cell whereas cytoplasm is denser and more granular in animal cell in arrangement of cytoplasm only a thin lining of cytoplasm mostly pushed to the periphery why children it is pushed to the periphery by now you would have got idea no because the most of the space is occupied by the vacuole and cytoplasm is pushed to the periphery the central position is occupied by vacuole whereas in the animal cell central position is occupied by the nucleus understand while drawing you should take care of all these things cytoplasm fills almost the entire cell in the animal cell now we are moving to the another important topic called protoplasm so we say living things and non-living things, isn't it? We say living thing means some life processes will take place, moving, breathing, food, digestion. So all these in your lower classes you have learned. Actually, what is that living matter? That living matter is protoplasm. Got it, children? The modern biologist aim you have learned in your previous lesson as to create life 
So what is that they are they wanted to create? They wanted to create a substance called protoplasm. That is the living matter. It is the entire or total living substance of the life. Got it? It is the living matter, the total substance of living cell that is cytoplasm and the nucleus together forms protoplasm. So you might ask me, why ma'am? It is easy you now once they know the composition, they can do the protoplasm. They can create life, isn't it? But it is very difficult. They are not able to do, they are not successful till date to create life. Why? Because the chemical composition of protoplasm is very complex. It varies a little from one cell to another. Although the common elements included in the composition of protoplasm such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, iron and phosphorus are the same in the cells. Means, suppose you take 10 cells from my body or 1000 cells from my body and go on test the protoplasm. Same living body from my body only they have taken. No? Same muscle tissue. But every cell has its own composition. Little variation will be there. So by studying this, if they want to try to do the same composition, they don't get protoplasm. It varies very little. That very little, little matters here. These elements are in the form of specific, specific compounds such as water, proteins, carbohydrates, fats and mineral salts. It is also true to say that it is impossible to make an accu accurate chemical analysis of protoplasm because it ceases to be protoplasm as soon as it is removed from the organism. Means, suppose just now we have learnt from my body they take 10 cells and they want to try to analyze my protoplasm. Okay, they take it out. The moment it is taken out, it ceases to, that is it dies. So, Whose composition they are learning now? Dead cell composition, not the living cell protoplasm composition. Living cell protoplasm composition, how they will study if they are not removing it from my body? They have to remove it from my body. The moment it is removed, it is ceases to be, it dies. Then how to find out? This is the reason, main reason people are not able to create life. And it is very difficult. So now we are going to learn two different kinds of cells. So good olden days onwards people were not able to know there are so many kinds of cells. They are not able to know the major difference. Once they came to know cytoplasm and nucleus, protoplasm, it became very easy to classify the cells. There are two kinds of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Pro means very primitive. Carrion means nucleus. What it? Pro means primitive or early. Carrion means nucleus. And eu means true, complete. And carrion means nucleus. So with this, they are able to classify the cells into two kinds. The term prokaryotic, pro, early, primitive, or carry on means nucleus refer to the cells containing primitive nucleus as in the case of bacteria whereas eukaryotic means you true complete and carry on nucleus meaning cells with the perfectly formed nucleus as in plants and animals that means here very primitive organisms like we have learned classification in your lower classes like six standards and all isn't it? So, there you have learned protista, kingdom protista, isn't it? And you, you have learned the structures like euglena, etc. They all euglena, amoeba, man and all. They all have this eukaryotic, eukaryotic cells, the advanced cells. They contain prominent nucleus. There are certain organisms which belong to a kingdom Monera where you find only bacteria and such organisms they don't have definite nucleus they are they all contain prokaryotic cells 
So the difference, the major differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. No well-defined nucleus in prokaryotic cells. In a prokaryotic cell, the a single length of only one DNA will be present. So in the in the place of nucleus, one deoxyribonucleic acid that is a DNA, a DNA strand will be hanging. Whereas in eukaryotic cell, well-defined nucleus with a nuclear membrane, double membrane structure, membrane structures will be there. And several lengths of genetic material called chromosomes. And you all already learnt the chromosomal number is specific for that particular species. So according to species, how many chromosomes, how many pairs must be there, that many pairs of chromosomes will be present in that nucleus. And they are having DNA wound around a certain proteins so that is the chief difference and coming to the other differences ribosomes are very small in prokaryotic cells whereas larger ribosomes are present and other than ribosomes no other cell organelles are present in the prokaryotic cells but in the eukaryotic cells several other, several other organelles like mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum chloroplasts lysosomes Golgi apparatus so many i have learned in unit 2 no all those are present in this eukaryotic cells and examples of prokaryotic cells are bacteria blue green and algae blue green algae are also called cyanobacteria whereas examples of eukaryotic cells are eugenia amoeba all plants animals and even human being cell is also called eukaryotic cell now every activity of living organism is the outcome of cellular activity. This one in the cell theory you have learnt. Any activity, any life process it has to be done means first it has to be done by the cell. For example, if you take any activity like growth. If the cells divide and increase in number of cells then growth takes place. Any injury or any regeneration of the last part should take place means cells should divide and new cells should but new cells should form that is only called repair suppose you take movement any movement of the bo body it should take place means the contractibility of the cells that is muscle cells should take place then only movement will say it take place in plants or animals whatever it may be animals will walk run run jump swim fly anything so muscle cells it should take place so contractile muscle cells if they contract the movement will take place similarly feeding nutrition the chloroplast present in the plant cells if they do photosynthesis then the food will be produced and if they are taken by the animals then nutrition feeding will be taken place Similarly, respiration, similarly, um, this uh, response to the stimulus, the stimulus, that is, we hear, we see, smell, taste, sensation of touch, pain, heat, whatever it may be, they are all activity of the cells, isn't it? And finally, if you take this uh, um, reproduction, reproduction uh, also, that is, giving birth to young one, that is also by the egg cells and the sperm cells then only it takes place by this what you understand any cell there is not a single activity in the body of an organism which is not carried out by the cells but cells of course are specialized for a particular functions this point you are going to learn in your next lesson tissues whatever it may be here also i'm going to tell you suppose you take nerve cells they are mainly for response to the stimulus if you take muscular cells, they are mainly for movement. Like that, cells are grouped into a groups specialized for particular functions. That you will be learning in your forthcoming lesson. Now we are moving on to the assignments. Name the scientist who coined the term cell. Name the scientist who coined the term protoplasm. Who discovered cell? Who discovered nucleus? Who discovered simple microscope next mention the function of the following ribosomes vacuole mitochondria centrosome Golgi bodies mention the location of the following endoplasmic reticulum centrioles nucleus ribosomes 
cell wall. Differentiate between the following as per the criteria given in the brackets. So this main children try to understand. So you, you know several differences between cell wall and cell membrane for example. But you need not write all the differences. Only what is asked stipulated to the criteria given into the given in the bra brackets only that one you are going to write for example cell wall and cell membrane composition and permeability that means you will write cell wall is made up of complex carbohydrate namely cellulose cell membrane is made up of lipoprotein that is for the composition and for the permeability cell wall is completely permeable cell membrane is selectively or semi permeable membrane that's all is the answer stick to the answer children don't write all the differences which you know understand now we are moving to the second one ribosomes and mitochondria function you will learn on you will write only function plant cell and animal cell size of the vacuole presence and absence of certain organelles like chloroplast our plastids are present in plant cell. Lysosomes and centrosomes are present in animal cells. The presence and absence only you will write. Prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell definition. Chromoplast and chloroplast. Name of the pigment present in diagrams. Draw a neatly labeled diagram of plant cell, animal cell, mitochondria and nucleus. So you are writing in a A4 sheet. Drawing neatly. Remember one thing, drawings must and should follow, should be followed by labeling children. Labeling is very, very important. Understood? Thank you.